individuals and played to the press. That's number 626. How can you say that there's no question of his innocence unless you were with him at the time and it was somewhere else? Well, the newspapers now are dropping the word alleged. I can say anything I want to say. We know you all know there's a revolution coming, and it's coming fast. They were just a pain in the neck for the nine months that the trial went on. Inside the packed courtroom, Manson held center stage. For several hours, Manson's narrative kept the crowded courtroom in absolute silence as he mixed comments on the evidence with his personal philosophy. Manson said, I've killed no one and I've ordered no one to be killed. Suddenly, Manson jumped on the defense table and leaped toward the judge, a yellow lead pencil in his hand. A bailiff tackled him in midair. As he was led away, Manson screamed, in the name of Christian justice, someone should cut your head off. It happened in full view of the jury, with the three female defendants chanting in the background. I could not comprehend how people in, in that position on trial for such heinous, ugly murders could be so pert and um, contrite in their, in their demeanor. They did not give a hoot. And just when it seemed the circus-like trial could not get any more bizarre, Leslie Van Houten's attorney, Ronald Hughes, mysteriously disappeared. The last thing I remember of Ronald Hughes, Manson pointed across the council table and said, attorney, I don't want to ever see you in this courtroom again. And we never saw him again. His body was found six months later. In November 1970, the prosecution and defense rested and the case went to the jury. Seven murders and conspiracy are charged against four defendants requiring 27 different verdicts. The jury found all the defendants guilty of first degree murder and conspiracy. In a separate trial, Tex Watson was also found guilty. Manson and his family protested the verdicts by shaving their heads. We cut our hair, we did it together. Everything we do, we do together. They also made threats on Manson's behalf. You better believe he's gonna cut some heads off when he gets out of here. I said, if you're not gonna come back with a verdict of death in this case, then we should abolish the death penalty in the state of California. And they did come back with a verdict of death. In January 1971, the family members were sentenced to die in the gas chamber at San Quentin Prison. But the following year, there was a stunning announcement. 101 men and five women on death row were waiting to die before the six to one decision struck down the death penalty. The California Supreme Court overturned the death penalty. And therefore, everybody who was on death row at the time, including Manson, Watson, and the three women, all got their sentence commuted from death to life. All sentences were reduced to life imprisonment, which makes those sentenced to death for murder, including Charles Manson, eligible for parole after seven years. But in and out of jail, the Manson family continued to make news. A young woman identified as a disciple in the cult of convicted mass murderer Charles Manson aimed a loaded pistol at President Ford at point-blank range today. Lynette Squeaky Fromm was sentenced to life in prison for trying to kill the president. My concern is not your president's. My concern is Manson, air, water, and earth. And it's just my gut feeling, so to speak, that the only reason she did this was to get Manson's name back in the newspapers. In due course, members of the family became eligible for parole. Yes, it was the 14th parole hearing in 33 years for Manson family member Leslie Van Houten, and again she apologized. It's a very difficult thing to live with what I did when I was 19 years old. And Krenwinkel filled Van Houten in on uh, everything that had happened, and Van Houten said that she was upset that she didn't get selected to go along on the first night, and she was hoping that uh, she would get selected on the second night. Van Houten helped that night, stabbing Rosemary 14 to 16 times. LaBianca family members say she never apologized to them. 
her brutal participation in murder and total disregard for the sanctity of life should forever seal her fate as a lifetime prisoner. By hearing's end, the parole board agreed. You're not suitable for parole and would pose an unreasonable risk of danger to society or a threat to public safety if released from prison. Leslie Van Houten was not the only member of Charles Manson's cult to throw themselves on the mercy of the parole board. Charles Manson and the members of his family were convicted for nine brutal murders. At the parole hearings, relatives of the victims were able to make a case for the continued incarceration of the killers. In July 2008, Susan Atkins, who held Sharon Tate down as she was stabbed to death, asked the California Parole Board for a compassionate release from prison. Atkins, now 60, has brain cancer, but Sharon Tate's niece appealed to the board to keep Atkins behind bars. Susan Atkins didn't murder by accident. She tasted Sharon's blood. She bragged about that. But I am opposed to any clemency for Ms. Atkins, as she is a cold-blooded woman who, to this day, has not displayed any true remorse for her participation in the murders. After a 90-minute hearing, Atkins was denied clemency. And in another twist in the long-running Manson saga, authorities have been looking for other victims of the family. The stories that have gone on over the years by various Manson family members, Susan Atkins herself confessed to a cellmate that they killed people out at Barker Ranch and that Charlie gave them orders to bury them eight feet deep. In May 2008, Paul Dotsey spearheaded a search for bodies at Barker Ranch, Manson's hideout in Death Valley. Uh, we actually dug some pretty big holes. Sergeant Dotsey, along with scientists and his specially trained dog, began the painstaking work of looking for human remains. I think uh, up here there's no one to hear you scream and, and you have a, a feeling that you can do whatever you want to do, particularly in 1969. Now, failure to find the skeleton is not the end of the story because typically what we do is we examine the soil. And so an analysis of the soil can sometimes reveal that a human being was buried at the site. We see some differences in the soil at the places where the dog actually alerted versus the rest of the soil out here. It's not entirely definitive. We can't say for certain that based on the chemistry alone that there are bodies buried out here but it's different enough that we cannot rule out that possibility if they're out here we'll be digging pretty close to where they are if uh, somebody was bludgeoned to death you might find the skull with fracture lines or compressions of the skull depending upon the circumstances we might be able to look at 40 year old evidence uh, and determine some very important information so I think uh, whether it's fully cooperated or not, we still need to go in there and excavate a little bit to see if there are human remains and uh, see if we can bring some closure to this. Even if they don't find bodies there, it wouldn't surprise me if the bodies are somewhere else. But th th this family, their religion was to kill people. It's one of those mysteries we may never solve. Charles Manson and his family have managed to maintain a cult following and exploit their notoriety. The Manson family are some of the richest inmates in the uh, uh, whole American penal system. They find ways all the time. Uh, Charlie has people that sign his signature and, and it goes out in the mail. He makes guitars and, and then it's sold on the outside. He's a dark celebrity associated with death. We have a society that loves violence and death. We love violence and death and celebrities. Decades after the crimes that rocked Los Angeles to its core, Charles Manson still denies his guilt in the Tate, LaBianca, Shea and Hinman murders. He's still Charles Manson. He doesn't think he's done anything wrong. I think that the average human being uh, cannot conceive of the brutality of this crime. The concept that you could kill people and set into motion a race war uh, is, is just, it's inconceivable. 
Charles Manson is the personification of the ultimate evil, so he will continue to live on for many generations to come, similar to the way Hitler does. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. Continuing the films on Discovery Season tomorrow at 9, see Edgar Rice Burroughs' Jungle Fantasy brought to life in Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. Next tonight, though, is one couple's apartment, the site of a haunting.